The self-publishing world has its share of would-be experts and overnight millionaires trying to dispense their advice and trying to flex their paychecks on you in hopes of hopefully of you know getting you to part ways with your hard-earned money to buy their course or their coaching and consulting and so on and so forth. But I do find that, gosh, there are quite a few people out there that are just absolutely incredible. And MK Williams is one that I have found to be a breath of fresh air over the past year to two years that I've followed her channel over on YouTube. And uh, she has such a great approach to things and is super down to earth. And that's why I thought, let's go ahead and bring her onto the channel because she's becoming a prolific author. And I think that's something the two of us share in common. In fact, we start out the conversation with just that. Uh, yeah, as we kind of go into the conversation, you'll see uh, so many reasons why I enjoy MK and I find her to be just a breath of fresh air. So without any further ado, let's get to the interview. So you just launched a new book. How many books does this make for you in total? This is 11. Wait, That's two, three, fiction and nonfiction five, six, included. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven. Ele see, th all right, you can feel me on this. As <laughs> soon as you go past like the first half dozen, you start to lose count, right? It's tough. Yeah, it's it's a lot. I mean, it's effectively like every book is its own little like business line. Like there's a lot to remember. Yeah, it, and manage. it is. It, it, it trust me. You when you pass like a couple of dozen, it starts to blur together. So this is why like one of the things when I do some of the interviews, I'll put inside my like bio and information. It usually says over 40 books. I just stopped counting after 40. I was just like, oh, screw this. So I went back and I read it once and I saw it was up to 50. So I'm sure you probably feel me on this. Yeah, yeah. It's it's exciting. Like I still get excited for each book release. Like I still care about each of my books. I want each of them individually to do well. But yeah, after a certain point, like the excitement is still there, but some of the stress and nerves are gone. Like I was saying last week for this launch, it exactly met my expectations. I was not underwhelmed. I was not overwhelmed. I was, it was exactly what I thought it would be. And it was nice yeah. to finally have that because for like the first book comes out and you're just like, this is it. Like I need to plan to go viral. Like Steven Spielberg's going to call me directly wanting to buy the rights. And then you're just like crushed when like that doesn't, this unrealistic thing doesn't happen. Um, yeah. Or you're just like, this isn't even going to do well. And then like going wide just like blew my mind. And I was like, I was not expecting any of this. And it was nice just to have a day where I was like, this is my job and I did my job and it's normal and it's level and that's fine. <laughs> that's what it should be. So it was nice to have a, um, a lunch that was not over or underwhelming. I was whelmed. It was fine. You're whelmed. I, I love it. I've never heard anybody say it that way. Yes. I want to come back to going wide here in a little bit, but I want to come and focus more on your fiction brand. Do you have both yeah. your fiction uh, books on hand right now? I have all my fiction. I'm just going to grab them off this shelf. I have all yeah, of them. I if I recall, like you whole... have like a very similar branding between the most recent release. And I think there was mm -hmm. another one because you look at them like side yeah. by side and they looked almost. Yes. So these are the Feminina series. Um, okay. So this was one and then this was two. And this was a DIY cover, believe it or not. Huh. And this was a pro cover which I think it looks so amazing. I mean, you can tell a pro did this. Um, but yeah. I think both of them work really, really well together. And had you not told me that these sp uh, specific covers were DIY or you hired out, I wouldn't have known any different, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And it was one of the things where I was trying a new um, cover service and I felt bad that I almost handcuffed them to be like, this is the second book in the series. So it needs to match this one. Like, have fun, but not too much. And so I'm, I'll be excited to work with them on like a totally different project in the future one day and be like, have fun, have at it. No, no history um, with this series, but they did a great job. So, can you share yeah. with me uh, who did the cover? Because it's it's absolutely amazing. Our, our yeah. listeners unfortunately won't be able to see how nice it is, but I love like the blue and purple that pops there with the mm -hmm. white text over top. It's mm, it looks beautiful. Yeah, so I worked with formatted books, actually. So they did an interior oh. makeover of the Infinite Infinite earlier um, in yeah. 2021, and they did the interior formatting, and they launched a cover design service in the beginning of January. And mm -hmm. so they said, hey, like, if you have a book coming up, we'd love to, like, do the full thing for you, and, and you can, like, show people how it works. And I said, that sounds great. 
that sounds perfect. I think in the past I've been really stubborn wanting to do it all myself and I just don't yeah. have the time anymore and it obviously looks amazing. So I was like, yes, um, happy to have just literally, I sent them the manuscript, I sent them the details I asked for and then I had a cover and a beautiful interior done and it was great. So I'll need formatted to remember books. to put a link over to formatted books because I worked with them previously as well and mm -hmm. they're, they're quite the team, um, the husband wife uh, couple that uh, run things. And obviously they have a much larger team. It's not just the mm -hmm. two of them doing it by themselves, but yeah. uh, they have been nothing short of spectacular and super, They're super great. nice to me. And I think their book covers are, are looking fantastic. It's great add on to mm -hmm. some of their services. What Absolutely. was your experience like in getting the interior formatted with them? The interior formatting was great. I think for me, yeah. I, I had no expectations going in. Um, mm -hmm. But when they they redid the interior for the infinite infinite first and just the yeah. side by side just blew me away. I mean, there's you know, it's a sci-fi book, right? So there's math symbols and there's stars and constellations. And like, I think they did a good job having the right amount of like little little things throughout the book that made it pop and made it special. Um, but it wasn't overwhelming. Like it was, I would say it was the perfect amount of like these little nice touches all throughout. Um, mm -hmm. And they continued that theme with the second book. So like now if you read the first and the second book in the series, you're like they visually look the same on the outside and on the inside. Like they did such a great job and they're so easy to work with and communicate with. Um, yeah. they were just great. So awesome yeah, experience, I've, but to I've anybody who's not worked them. with, <laughs> yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say anybody who's not worked with a professional before, like don't expect just send it off and then you get it back and there's no comments, no changes, nothing like every single page <laughs> yeah. of your book. Like this book is almost is over 300 pages. Like every single page is a piece of art. And so yeah. like you have to check each page like it it makes sense like um so expect yeah sometimes you will have to go back and say oh this looks good but like if it looked this way maybe it could look even better or like oh could we try this could we try that like designers are open to feedback and it should be a conversation not a just do it and give it back perfect and if it's not perfect i'm gonna hate you like that's that doesn't work um so like expect a conversation <laughs> and a back and forth so you, you can't expect it uh, perfect the first time through. It's That's a rare occasion I know I've found in some instances. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I was talking to Joanna Penn uh, a couple of weeks ago, and she was talking about how when she goes through her editing and proofreading, she actually will print out her manuscript to where it's, you know, left page, right page, so she can just close the manuscript up and fold it. And that way she sees how it looks through book form. How is your process in we'll say prior to working with formatted books, mm -hmm. what was your process like in developing the interior for your print books and your eBooks? Yeah. So before working with formatted books, I would do my own formatting, which um, I use Scribus, which is a free open source tool. Um, but as okay. far as like editing it to even get to where it's formatting. So I always tell people that I work with when you are formatting your book, this is your um, till death do us part moment. Right. This is your yeah. if anybody have any have any objections, speak now or hold your peace. Um, like it should be done, done, done a million times done, because once it's in that format, any edits you have to make on your master doc and the formatted everywhere. So I go through multiple times reading the book myself. I have my husband is always my first reader and he can tell me if something is wackadoo or just doesn't make sense before it even goes to the editors. The editors yeah. look at it. Um, and part of my process is I do read my books aloud. Um, to catch anything. And sometimes it's as simple as, wow, I I even noticed in the Alpha Nina, which thankfully I recorded it um, before I sent it off to formatting. I was like, people are sighing a lot to show they're exasperated. I'm gonna, we need to just change up what they're doing. Um, or sometimes I'm catching typos, but a lot of times I'm like, oh, yeah, I already said that take that out. Um, so I always read my books aloud as part of my editing process. And what I've done recently um, is instead of just reading it aloud, just to read it aloud, I also record myself for the audiobook for the narration. So it takes a bit mm -hmm. longer. Um, but I, I feel confident that the book is as done as it's going to ever get before I send it off to formatting. Um, and I think when I was doing the formatting myself, I would kind of let that go. And then I'd be like, oh, I should have got that before. So now working with professional, it actually holds me to like, this needs to be as done as done can be before I send it off. So um, that's been my process and they've done a great job. I don't have to worry about checking all the lines and like guesstimating that the spacing yeah. works. Like somebody who speaks design speak makes it work. Yeah, yeah, it's you can focus on other things. And I mean, this kind of blew my mind. I did not know this about you that you're you're doing your own audiobooks. Yes. So wow. my first two audiobooks, I worked with professionals and I really lucked into okay. like, 
having friends who were like very talented voice actors. Um, I live in Central Florida, and so we have a lot of theme parks. And some of the actors get us to a certain age and they say, I hate being outside and sweaty all day and kids screaming at me. What else can I do with my voice talents? And so I got lucky. One of my great friends was like, hey, could I narrate your audiobook to help me like prove to other people I could narrate audiobooks and I'll do it for free. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can you can <laughs> use no your more. professional talents and <laughs> narrate my audiobook. Um, so the first two I had done with a professional, but I've done the rest. And at first it was more like a learning experience. Like I want to try it. I want to learn it. Um, and like, I'll bring it to my channel and like show people like how hard it is, and like why it's good to hire a professional. And I really enjoyed the process. Um, so I've continued to do it just because reading aloud is part of my editing process. Um, mm. So I've continued to do that. The only book that does not have an audiobook is because I have not narrated it, is because the main character throughout is a male. And I was like, I don't think I can pull that off um so i am hoping soon to uh to, to save up my pennies of royalties from that book again each book is a business line um so once that book does well i will reinvest in getting the audiobook narrated by a male with a male voice for that one but yeah doing the audiobooks is fun time consuming but fun yeah uh so where would you end up starting to look for a new narrator what's your thought process I think I'm probably going to go with the Find Away Voices Marketplace. Um, just oh, because yeah. That did you see that big launched. deal that's coming in June? Huh? I did see that. And I was like, I would Billboard love to New York's like, what? <laughs> I know. I saw that. And I was like, how can I just like, how many entries to this can I get? Like, can I just put out some more books and just say like, yep, yep, yep. I've got deals. I've got deals. And I just put in all my books. Um, so it, it sounds amazing. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'll see if I'm. I continually like each quarter look at my finances so I'll see how the book is performing because obviously paying for a narrator up front is much more expensive and costly oh, yeah. but if they do a good job it's a long book it's not a shorty um so we'll see I would love to enter that contest though what's I would uh, just the know the cost it? like what is that yeah like what if I just wanted to buy that for myself like what would that do hmm. so expensive but so like what what type of a budget are you looking at potentially like putting aside a couple grand like what what's i, I should go, come back what's the length right now that you have it at um it's over 200 pages so it's okay. uh, about it's over eighty thousand words so it, it would okay. be at least a couple grand um for that yeah. audiobook and that's why i've just Easily. waited i don't see nobody's banging down the door for it yet um right so we'll see yeah. This is very interesting, and I'm glad to see that you're not just going all in. You're like, you know what? I'm just gonna just mortgage the house. Screw it. We're, let's just go with this. Mm -hmm. You're you're smart. So, how are you going to try to save up for that two thousand dollars? Yeah. So what I do is I look at, um, I have a big tracking sheet. So I see all the money that comes in from all of my books. Um, and mm -hmm. so I can see by series. So this is the second book in a series. So I can look and say, hey, this series so far has netted me X amount um, because mm -hmm. I did have design costs and advertising costs and things like that. So I look at the net of each book and what it's earned um, when it finally goes from being in the red to being in the black, how far it is into the black, how much I want to then reinvest. Um, that informs a lot of my advertising like paid advertising decisions like my nonfiction books um, get back to zero and then into the black much faster than my fiction books mm -hmm. um, because the fiction books are longer like the the work to be done on them has a higher cost um, and also the nonfiction books I think just I have a larger audience specific to that um, yeah. so I'm able to then reinvest into advertising for those a bit faster and things like that so I'm constantly looking at where it is um, and I would like to, to have some money I don't want to always be reinvesting all of it. Um, so that's going to be part yeah. of the, the calculus I do on that. Will you rob Peter to pay Paul? Meaning that the nonfiction book sales, do you use that net profit to maybe help out the fiction brand or vice versa? I want to do that more, but I'm trying to keep it really set. And mm -hmm. it's... It depends on the amount, right? Like, I don't think I would put all of my nonfiction royalties and say, oh, I'm going to do one audiobook for a fiction book. But I think I might say, hey, I can take some of this to invest in a few ads here or there. Um, okay. Or like, it's worth it for me to dip into the red on a book where I think, hey, like, I there's a good opportunity here to run ads or things like that. Um, as my series grows, I know my first in series books will probably always be in the red if I'm constantly advertising the first book to try and get more sales and then read through. So um, yes, yes and no. It, it depends on the extent to which I'd be, I'd be yeah. borrowing from Peter to PayPal. Yeah. 
Yeah, borrowing. <laughs> I like how you put that. This is uh, this is really cool. You've got this series now. It's part two of this series. Mm-hmm. How far out do you think that you're going to build this series? Is there any end in sight? Yes, it is. Go- well, yes and no. So it's a, okay. a multiverse time travel book um, okay. series. So I have four books planned in the Feminina series that are really going to follow the main character and her alter egos, Feminina. Um, and that's going to be four books. Um, right now, I'm working on the third book. And I'm actually mapping out books three and four as I go. So I kind of know exactly, like, this is where everybody is at the end of book two. And this is where I need them to get by the end of book four. And here's what needs to happen in between. Um, and there's a few side characters from the, the first two books that I'm actually writing more of a backstory to right now, because they're going to take a bigger focus in books three and four. Um, so I'm almost like building out more side content now, away from the the main manuscript to then shape what happens in the manuscript. Um, so I will have four books in this series, but um, I think with what I've opened up in book two, I can kind of do spinoff series. Um, so this world may be larger, but I need to finish this series so then I can finish this series so then I can write these new books that I want to write. There's, I'm never going to be done. Never. It's, yeah, never, never. It's amazing to see that you're interweaving like this a whole you're not just world building you're practically universe building at this point Mm -hmm. this is incredible (laughs) so what would you say and i hate to to put you on the spot what's your launch strategy like for say books three and four so i kind of go back and forth where i'm kind of like i just want to write books three and four all at once Mm -hmm. and like just take the next six months and like it's done and get them both out at the same time and then part of me says no you're crazy Um, And I think what I realized is on my fiction is that I go a bit slower. Like I could probably do good with like a book a year on the fiction side. And I know some self-publishers like, oh my gosh, you got to do at least four. You got to do six. You got to keep turning it over. But I find the more I let things percolate, the more I let kind of that like that dirt sift to the bottom, the plot holes get filled, things get smoother, things get cleaner. Like even like last night I was like reading a, a totally different book, totally different genre. And I just stopped and I was like, oh no, this has to happen in the side story I'm writing to make this happen here in this book. And like, you know, it just takes time. If I had just rushed through, I would have been like, I've written too much this way. I can't go back and redo it. Um, So I I am glad to take my time. So I would like to at least launch book three, I'll say in 2023, um, just because Mm -hmm. I'm writing it right now. It has to go through editing and multiple rounds of editing and, and formatting and design. And then I would love to get book four out shortly thereafter just to give people the resolution for the series um, mm. because I kind of know where it's going to resolve. I just have to get everybody there and it's definitely going to take two books to do it. Um, so yeah, I go back and forth. One day I would be like, they're just going to both come out at once and they're both going to be done and I'll, I'll be done with it forever. And other times I'm like, no, I'm going to take my time and be really thoughtful. So depends on the day. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. I, I really, I find it so fascinating and just seeing authors like yourself, fiction authors that build out the series and a lot of the folks see like the biggest results when they have a full series or in your case where there's many spinoffs, you're building out an entire universe of books. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah. that's why I was so curious, but let's do a hard shift over back into nonfiction because I told mm-hmm. you, I, I selfishly wanted to talk about going wide. A great yeah. book. I read it last year. She, she forced me at gunpoint just to let you know. Um, <laughs> Totally kidding. Totally kidding. Totally kidding. It was a fantastic read talking about publishing your books wide Um, rather than regurgitating what you have inside there. Let's talk about that launch success that you saw with going wide and what was your strategy with that launch and were the results what you expected kind of like what you said with your most recent release. So a few things here. Um, I will say so. Going White is the fourth book in my Author Your Ambition series, which is a whole nonfiction series about self-publishing, writing the book, getting it out there, marketing it, like all all the basic first-timer questions that authors have. And I started writing these books based on the YouTube channel that I launched in 2018 um, after I had been self-publishing since 2015. So when this book, Going Wide, came out in 2021, I had been doing this for seven years. So like writing, self-publishing, doing the things I had, my channel was going for three years, building just like a nonfiction author information audience. So I will say for anybody listening who's like, I want to write a nonfiction book and I have no, like no audience, like don't expect the same exact results. Um, Mm -hmm. Same exact results. Yeah. Um, Because 
it's it took a long time to build that up um and so i think the biggest things that led to the success of going wide were um that time like building that channel um i didn't even realize that i was uh, i was kind of barking up the wrong tree for a couple of years on my youtube channel i was like <laughs> i know i'll answer questions it'll save me time and somehow magically people will just want to buy my fiction books and like no, because not everybody reads science fiction, but the people who were following me on the channel had questions. And I was like, I feel like I'm answering the same questions. I was like, oh, wait, I could, I could write a book to answer these questions. That's what, that, that's what I could do. It took me a while for that idea to percolate through. Um, and so I happened to have a, an audience already of a couple thousand people who were potentially interested in this book. Over time, I've been building connections in the independent author community where when I said, hey, like I'm writing another book for indie authors and it's about going wide, people said, yes, that's awesome. I need that. I wish I had this book when I got started. So that that takes a while, a slow like build to make genuine connections with people that want to support your work and appreciate what you're doing um, and are willing to stop work on their books and their business to say, yes, I'll read your book and I'll, I'll endorse it and I'll support it for you. Um, so mm -hmm. that was a big factor. Um, I did put some advertising dollars behind it. Um, okay. I will say I got luck. Um, I'm <laughs> very frugal. And so I was yeah. putting it just like $5 a day. I just put it on auto. Um, and I only put the ads up for like the month before launch. Um, yeah. And it did, it showed I had like a huge ace, like average cost of sale. But at the time, like the ebook was on sale through um, on pre-order through KDP. But obviously yeah. the print book wasn't on pre-order through KDP. So all the print order sales I got through Ingram Spark didn't show. But I was like, I, I think I think the Amazon ads helped because they were linked. But like Amazon's not going to tell me that I sold a book through Ingram Spark on their website. So um, yeah. I just kind of said, I think that was a big part of it. Um, and I think I spent max like $40 on those ads. Like it was very slow. It was not very productive in terms of what you would think. And I say that because some people say, oh, I did ads, I just threw some ads up. And really they're spending five figures. Like I spent less than $50, like again, <laughs> Nice, at a girl. <laughs> um, and 50 so bucks, think, you're talking yeah. my language. <laughs> less, yeah, less than that because you know, I'm like, oh, I, haven't, I don't know what I sold yet. I don't want to go too much further into into the red. Um, and so yeah. another thing that helped was that I made a mistake. And I was like, okay, I'm going to launch this book in October 5th. And that's the day. And then yeah. by the time I had everything done, I was like, this is not enough time for me to give it what it needs. The book is launching on November 2nd. November 2nd is when it's going to launch. And I updated um, the pre-order everywhere. Like when I set the pre-order, I set it for November 2nd. Um, but in Ingram Spark, I did not change it. So my print book went live a month ahead of my ebook. And I was, I was more, I was like, this is literally my job. My job is to help people make sure they don't make these mistakes. And I made these mistakes because I was rushing. I'm a baby girl. Like, it happens. My life was chaos. Um, yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to make the most of this. And I was like, anybody who ordered the print book, if you want to go leave a review, you can. And I think that actually helped because I had reviews on the book because the entire, um, all the formats were linked on Amazon. So like if somebody left a review yeah. for the print book, it showed up for the ebook, which I think also helped people say, oh, okay, I'll, I'll check this out. I'll pre-order it. So that was a happy mistake. Don't, don't, unless you intentionally <laughs> want to have a different launch day for your print book and your ebook, don't do what I did. Um, a happy mistake i probably could not generate that success again um i yeah. think i yeah so i think there were several things that kind of worked in my favor there a lot of it was like the long haul um having you know friends like you and maddie dower and bull from the indie author um oh, and several maddie. other people like endorsing my book and like keith wheeler like doing a video on his channel for the book like that was huge and obviously like out of the goodness of your heart you probably would not have just helped a stranger that you'd be like i don't know you <laughs> like what? get in line behind everybody else who wants me to endorse their book but like making genuine connections with people um mm -hmm. in the author space helped as well um and i always say genuine connections because yeah not just surface level like oh i'm gonna get something out of this person you yes. never ever did yeah. i ever feel that way with you because no. i i actually became a fan of yours before we even connected and i reached out to you and you're like wait you're watching my channel what <laughs> yeah. i was like it was what funny <laughs> I was like, huh? which by the way everybody should have uh, be subscribed to you over on youtube if they don't go over check out mk williams i highly endorse where's your subscriber count at you at 10k no i'm not even halfway there i am inching closer to 5,000 subscribers a day nice. which is so yeah which is like so amazing to me that like 
people want to watch what I have to say. And I'll say, again, I said in 2018, a lot of my story is I messed up a lot. I spent a lot of time doing it wrong. And then I finally figured out how to do it the right way. And so now I'm going to tell you do it the right way and not do the mistakes I made. Um, Same thing with YouTube, like through mid 2020, I was just like, I don't understand why people aren't subscribing. And then I was like, oh, I don't have tags on any of my videos that (laughs) that might help. Um, So yeah, so definitely um... turned the channel around. We're uh, we're gonna get to the end here of the podcast. We're going a little longer than normal, but I want you to Sorry. briefly share with me um, what's some advice that you could share to any aspiring authors and self-publishers. I would say have a plan and have patience. Um, there's so much excitement and there's so much emotion that we put into writing our books and wanting to get them out there and saying it's done. I ha- I wrote the end. It's done. Let's get it out there. Um, and that lack of patience leads to mistakes it leads to you feeling that sense of being underwhelmed by your launch and things like that so having a plan going over your plan what are the holes in the plan what are the things that could go wrong with the plan being patient will always have the best results for you um, because if you're not patient if you just rush it you'll have that sense of disappointment on your launch day and nobody wants that this is an exciting day for you so take the time have a plan and be patient and it'll all work out Big shout out over to MK. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out your day to spend some time with us. Hey, folks, uh, do us both a favor. Go check out Formatted Books, as we had mentioned in the uh, the uh, interview. There's going to be a link inside the show notes, of course, as usual. You can go over to dailinks.com slash formatted books to get yourself an idea of why we like formatted books so much. And, of course, go over to MK Williams on YouTube. She's fantastic. That's youtube.com slash author, And it'll go right over to her YouTube page. Go ahead, subscribe. You'll see why I enjoy her so much and why you're going to enjoy her too. Till later, folks. I'm actually going to come back to you with another interview this coming week. I will see you then.